Good morning. I will wait for some people to join in in the feed. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Uh, going to work. <laughs> Good morning to everybody. God bless everybody. Good morning. How are you guys doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News, that America's voice. God bless everybody that is watching. God bless my country of Mexico, my city of Tijuana. And also, God bless the United States of America. Let's thank God for another day, people. For another day that he has given us two legs, two arms, two hands. A mind that we can think and a heart that we can feel and eyes that we can see. Good morning to all of you. Hope that you guys are doing great. Thank you for joining my feed. And this, like Pedro Ferri says, this new horizon of news that is happening around the world. Let's see uh, how many people they can join in. <clears throat> there we go. How's everybody doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News. Let's start, people. Yesterday, my God. Yesterday, and we have a lot of topics to talk about, but yesterday, we saw a hotel with 150 rooms, the accommodations that not only, that not Mexican citizens can get, the accommodations of a hotel, really nice by the way, inside, with the parking spot, with the terrace. Also, the accommodations of a hotel we saw with th three bedrooms, two TVs, one in each room, a bathroom, really nice, you know, a little get together living room. And we saw the whole hotel. This hotel is being rented out by the World Health Organization that is working with the United Nations. So this hotel in Tijuana, in the city that I live in, in Tijuana, as you guys have seen how I broadcast how the United Nations has been, has been in our city working and funding shelters. And last night we saw how this hotel is funded by the United Nations. Imagine how much they're going to pay for the stay of migrants that they are getting deported from the United States, that they're possible possible infected with COVID. If they're infected with COVID, they are going to be treated in that particular hotel. And also other migrants from entities like Mexico, if they want to go from the city to over there, which it has happened before. It is a lie. Shelters around the city that they are, you know, taking whoever they, whoever they want to take. Not all shelters are like that. A lot of them, they shelter Mexicans, yes, in their own country, but not all of them because they don't see the profit, the benefit. So last night we saw this hotel that is 150 rooms, that is paid by the United Nations, that is gonna hold migrants that they are deported from the United States, that they are going to be hosted in this hotel. Really nice one, by the way. If you can go to my page and see the feed, uh, it got cut. You know, there's two videos. Uh, the first one is me going in. The second one is me, you know, now practically uh, going around the hotel. And it's amazing, you know, the unfairness to the Mexican people of where, my question is, where were you United Nations before the caravans? That's my question. Like, where was the United Nations? Where was the World Health, World Health Organization? Where was the, the International Commission of Human Rights before, before the Carabas? Where were they? 
They were nowhere to be seen. This is why I say defund the United Nations and prosecute George Soros. This is an evil and demonic and orchestrated, evil and demonic and orchestrated movement to disturb uh, and destroy sovereign nations. I'm sorry, but I'm calling it the way it is. And not only that, this is the most concerning thing. You are telling the people in the community of this, where the where this hotel and so-called now shelter, it's going to be located at. But you tell the people, you don't tell the people that you're coming. You don't tell, the, you don't consult the community as protests already been done outside of the hotel and personnel by the hotel, it's not their fault, people. The personnel that they work in the hotel, they, they have a job and they have already gave them a course. And guess who gave them the course of security inside the hotel to the personnel of the hotel? The United Nations. <laughs> I talked to one of the, uh, one of the maids uh, that works inside of the hotel and she's saying no. A lot of people are saying that these are not patients, that they have been 40% infected, 40% uh, in recovery in the United States in detention centers. These people that they're gonna be, be deported to, your, to, to Tijuana. They are in recovery and they're going to recover over here in this hotel. So you're talking about that you haven't even said the reality and the truth to the community where that hotel is at. It's in the middle of, in the middle of the city, people. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's in the middle of the damn city. And you haven't said nothing to the community. Absolutely nothing. Number one. Number two. Who is going to move them and transport them from Exhibit A, the exit of the, you know, of the United States to Mexico? Who's going to receive them right there to move them all the way to the hotel? Are there going to be, there's going to be transportation for them? Because if they are infected, they're going to be running, running around the whole, you know, the whole, uh, the, the whole city looking for some shelter. My God, the irresponsibility of the United Nations, it's enormous. It's enormous. The enormous, the, the irresponsibility of the United Nations. Not only that, you get people that they're possibly infected, possibly infected with COVID or in recovery from the infection of COVID in a community that you haven't even asked, that you haven't even asked for permission of the citizens. There's a gated community, for God's sake, in front of the hotel. What do you think they're going to say? What do you think they are going to say? You think they're going to say that everything's okay? You think they're going to say that everything's okay? That's why I'm saying defund the United Nations, man. It is amazing the irresponsibility and you know the the lack of the lack of understanding of the procedures to put shelters it's like the one in in, in in next to the wall at the beach at playa de tijuana the united the united nations the, the, the global compact of immigration has uh has laws and the global compact of immigration says that every shelter has to be 30 miles away from the wall 30 miles away if not if it's not 30 miles away you're violating the global compact of immigration. You're talking about the United Nations is violating their own their own global compact. It is amazing. That shelter is not 30 miles away from the border. It's not 30 miles away. Why are you bringing problems into a community that is concerned now with possibly infestation or getting infected with COVID and spreading more of the COVID? And not only that, the personnel from inside the hotel, my God, they're so scared. Now, they're so scared of number one, people looking at them with disgust. Why am I saying this? Because that's the way that, you know, citizens have been acting with doctors and nurses over here in the city. The doctors and the nurses have been denied by society because they're possibly infected with COVID. Not only that, not only that, 
Now, these doc, these people that they're working in the personnel are afraid that they're going to be denied by society because they work. They work in uh, <clears throat> in uh, in a hotel that is, you know, that is infected now, that is going to be possibly infected. Now, I talked to a maid outside of the hotel and she said this. The UN gave them a course on how to clean inside the room and they are going to do a deep cleaning in the hotel with professionals that they are going to disinfect the whole place for four hours every Friday. That is the agreement already. So you're so you're lying to me that you're saying, you know, there's, there's possibly coming people that they're going to be infected. They're lying about this. No, there's people that they are going to be infected. They're going to come. Exactly this situation, people, is not the first city that does this. Just for everybody to know, we have evidence of documented so from my last visit to Juarez, Ciudad Juarez, the city that connects to El Paso, that Ciudad Juarez has also a hotel that is hosting migrants that are being deported with possibly infected with COVID. This is an operation that not only is happening in Tijuana, but in every border, it is happening. So it's a gigantic concern. It's a big concern to the country of Mexico and to the Mexican citizens. It's a big, huge concern. Why? Because it's, it's, a, it's an infection hotel. It's an infected hotel. Or why? Are they paying private hotels to host deported migrants? Isn't that the responsibility of the government of Mexico? There's supposed to be one authority who picks up the migrants, tells them, hey, this is the bus that you need to pick to go back to your country. That is the way. Who is, why are we holding something that it needs to be go to their country again? You had the opportunity to ask for the asylum. You had the opportunity to ask for the refugee. It's time to go back home. It didn't work out. <clears throat> and this is the irresponsibility. This is why I was upset last night of the United Nations. The United Nations is doing this to our country of Mexico. Not only to our country, to the world. And now that community is saying, my God, now we're going to see activists right here. We're going to see riots right here. The same the same thing that happened in the shelters. We're going to see it right here. This community that is already, you know, up in violence, up in delinquents. Now they're going to get, you know, all these problems now. Adding to the fact that the ones that they had already. It's amazing, people. So I'll be sure the on Friday is the first bus. Of, uh, of people that they're going, the hotel is going to be receiving. The first bus uh, that they're going to be receiving this uh, amount of people. I don't know how many they're going to come on the first uh, <clears throat> the first day, but the, the hotel has already been prepared for these people. It's already been prepared and it's going to be prepared for these people that are coming out. Now, who's funding it? Again, the United Nations is funding this. It's amazing, people. On another topic... The New York Times, <laughs> pretty viral. The Federal Reserve and the New York Times have been really viral in this uh, past weeks. The New York Times said yesterday, and it's amazing. This it is insulting. This uh, this statistic that the New York Times has said it is insulting. Really, it is really insulting. This is statistic that the New York Times is saying, and it's this and it's discouraging. You know, it is, it is an insult because it's not credible. And it's not, you don't believe this statistic and you don't believe this stat. But according to the New York Times, according people to the New York Times, <laughs> according to the New York Times, Joe Biden is up 14 points on the election. Joe Biden supposedly, according to the New York Times, the New York Times, according to the New York Times, Joe Biden is up 14 points. Wow. <laughs> you guys believe that? 
do you guys actually believe the lies of the New York Times? My God, the New York Times has converted into a radical, socialist, leftist, but radical, radical, progressive, leftist newspaper, man, of information. It is unbelievable. The New York Times says that Joe Biden has been sleeping this whole time, but Joe Biden is up 14 points. It's up 14 points, Joe Biden, on this elections, on the polls, on Trump. 14 points. That means, according to the New York Times, that means, according to the New York Times, where the people that are joining in, oh my God, he's talking bad about Trump. No. Well, there are people that are joining in, according to the New York Times, Joe Biden is up 14 points. That means that people, Joe Biden is winning by a landslide. And he has the majority vote already. 14 points. Do you know how much is 14 points? Oh my God, that's thousands of people. 14 points. And that's what they're saying. And these polls, I don't know where they're getting them. The New York Times, I don't know where. Probably Democrat states. That is the only place that they're going to get them. But it is amazing. <laughs> the, 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 oh my God. 14 points, really, New York Times? 14 points? And they're saying also that Fox said exactly the, exact, the, the same thing. 14 points. That means, people, that Joe Biden is winning by a landslide. Huge. And, you know, the left over here in Mexico is saying that that is going to provoke Donald Trump to do something. Immediate action. Immediate action. That is going to do something. And you know what they're speculating that is going to happen, right? <clears throat> this is what they're speculating that is going to happen. AMLO, the president of Mexico, Trudeau, visiting the White House. <laughs> this topic has a lot to do with the polls and how the elections are going. <clears throat> this is what they're saying and the speculation and it is almost true, people. Andres Manuel López Obrador, the socialist president of Mexico, is a possibility of going to the Oval Office into the White House. There is a possibility of AMLO going into the Oval Office, into the White House, and also Justin Trudeau. <laughs> These communist and socialist people, possibly there is, again, a possibility of these communist two people to go inside of the White House. Now, what is the right and the left saying? That that is the concern of everybody. The right is saying, <clears throat> the left, let's go first with the left. The left is saying, if they go in there and if they get invited to the White House, Justin Trudeau and, uh, you know, and AMLO, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, this is going to be a talk about the international trade only between Canada the United States and Mexico. This is going to be because of that agreement of the international trade between Canada, the United States, and Mexico. If, if this reunion happens in the Oval Office with Donald Trump and his administration, it will be around August or September. That is what they're saying. And if they are going to go in, there the left is saying, the right is making too much, you know, speculations out of out of an international trade that is going to happen. You know, the right is exaggerating. That is what the left is saying. <clears throat> and, you know, the left sees it that is only going to be for the international trade. That's it. To talk about the international trade that the MEC, that is going to be between Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Now, have you guys heard about Trudeau lately? Quiet. Quiet. I've been telling you guys about this. Justin Trudeau 
not to be trusted. I'm sorry for the people that are listening from Canada. I have a lot of audience from Canada, but Justin Trudeau, not to be trusted also. He's a communist also. And he's been really quiet, really quiet. He made two statements when the riots started happening and now he made a statement about the economy about two weeks ago of the United States and how the future of the economy of the, of the United States, if they stay with this leader, is going to fall. That's what he said. Now, they are inviting possibly an invitation of Justin Trudeau and AMLO to the White House. Now, what is the right is saying? What the right is saying is that possibly is going to be a trap. And it's going to be a trap for what? To sit down with them and tell Trump to tell them. And Trump, you know, that is, I see it more than likely to go that way. Tr talk about the international trade and also ultimately, you know, sit down with them and, you know, tell them how it is. And, you know, in the right, in, 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 the right in Mexico are saying this is going to be a trap for AMLO and ultimately it will create a friendly atmosphere between the Hispanic community and also not only the Hispanic community but uh, the Mexican community with you know with Trump now okay what do I mean by a trap what do I mean by this? It means that, in this, in this, that's, this is what they're explaining. It means that when Justin Trudeau sits down with Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador and Donald Trump at the same office, this is what they say that, that it's going to happen. <laughs> they're going to sit down and Trump is going to tell them, look, Mexico, you AMLO, look, Canada, you Trudeau, we are not a socialist country. We are not going to turn into a socialist country. This is a capitalist country. And this is the way that a capitalist country works. I don't know about you guys, but this is the way that it works. And these are the conditions. I believe, and everybody in the right believes that if this meeting happens between Trump, Trudeau, and AMLO, there's going to be a friendly, you know, atmosphere to create friendly atmosphere for the Hispanic community and also for, you know, also to sit down with AMLO and tell them, you know what, there's not going to be no socialism in our country. If that happens, people, my God. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, and wow. If that happens. Wow. Why? Because this is more than likely everybody knows, everybody knows now in the world that our president of Mexico is tendencies of socialism are strong and his connections with the, you know, with his friend uh, Nicolás Maduro in Venezuela are really strong also. So I believe that there's going to be a lot of topics that they're going to be talked in that Oval Office, really famous Oval Office in the United States, I truly believe that they're going to tell them, you know what, this is not going to be a socialist country. You're not going to run this country. You're not going to run the United States to the ground with your socialist agenda. And I believe that they're going to talk. This is a possibility, and you can Google and research it yourself uh, to make sure about what I'm talking about. Now, in another topic, talking about you know, people from Venezuela and Nicolás Maduro talking about that. Uh, uh, we were talking, we were uh, having a discussion yesterday and we were talking about a topic about the uh, possible caravans that they're coming on the 30th of June. Caravans that they have been instigated by an activist by the name of Carlos Villagran. This activist, Carlos Villagran, speculated to be paid by the left and by the Democrat Party to instigate and motivate people to migrate in masses of people in Central America and around the world. 
This activist yesterday gave a statement of saying more than 70,000 people are awaiting around the Triangle of Central America and also outside the Triangle. The that means Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, Costa Rica, and now Honduras, El Salvador, and uh, Guatemala. Those five countries, he's saying that around 70,000 people are awaiting for the doors to be open. Now, why am I talking about the exile? Now, there's a politicians and there's politicians in Venezuela from the right. And there's also uh, uh, political advisors uh, in Europe that they're saying that the economic fall of Venezuela is efficient if in, in standards of socialism. Look what they're saying. And that more than 5 million people have exiled from Venezuela because of the economical uh, descent, of the economical failure, of the fall of the economy in Venezuela. More than 5 million people, imagine that, have been had exiled Venezuela because of the poverty and because of the government and because they're 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 exiling of Venezuela because of the socialist agenda now if you're talking about how this uh political advisors of Europe they're saying it's the economical fall of the socialist agenda they're not saying a fall like the economy is poor. No, it's the perfect way to the to affect the economy as socialism and to convert to the economy of what they want to. This is a planification that is orchestrated, people. This is how socialism is orchestrated to go. The econ the, the collapse of the economy. Poverty, chaos, control of population, control of everything, control of the internet, control of the signals, control of everything. This is part of the strategy. Imagine that political advisors are saying around the world that the exile of Venezuela is due to the perfect economic fall of socialism. They're calling it perfect economic fall of socialism it means that all this demonic plan by Nicolas Maduro and all the foros of Pablo and you know and the socialist liberals that they have affected this country that it was rich before it was a perfectly done plan amazing amazing and you see all these people now on the caravan that a lot of them that a lot of them are coming from Venezuela this new caravan that are a lot of them coming from Venezuela and now they're not calling it a caravan they're calling it an exodus an exile an exodus movement from poverty and from countries that their socialism is being implemented and you got these liberals in the United States all these stupid liberals in the United States that believe in socialism, not all liberals, the ones that they believe in socialism, all these demonic people that they believe that socialism is the solution for the economy and the better well-being of humanity. It does not work. There's an exile of more than 5 million people exiting Venezuela because of socialism and all these activists from the United States trying to bring it into the United States. A democratic socialist party is not a democrat party anymore. It's a democratic socialist party. Unbelievable, shameful. Bring that socialism into the United States of America when you are seeing people exiting an exodus, exile from their countries because of socialism. Where is the logic right there, people? Where is the logic? It's amazing. 
It's amazing. And political advisors are saying this because of the turn of events that has been happening right now with Venezuela. As I've been telling you, Iran is getting much and much closer to be a you know, really close ally. They have been allies, but be really close ally with Venezuela. The community of Iran has grown enormously in Venezuela. And the community of Iran in Venezuela is getting the <clears throat> supplies from a big boat, a big ship uh, from Iran that is, you know, supplying Venezuela only for the Iran Iranian community, not for the Venezuelan people, for the Iranian community inside of Venezuela. The negotiations between the United States and Venezuela to take out Nicolas Maduro are not going well. This is coming, this is happening behind, you know, behind all the virus, behind all of this, that we are distracted and we are, you know, and we are practically held hostage of this virus. We're held hostage of this, of this mask. We are hostage right now in our homes and we don't know practically what is going on around the world. And this is what is going around, what is happening around the world that the United States is trying to take out Nicolas Maduro, pressuring him to block all the entrances and also to put tariff in Venezuela. And now everybody in Venezuela is exiting of an exodus of exile, you know? And, you know, that is the, uh, how they're gonna be, how are you gonna be a democratic socialist and be for democratic socialism and you're seeing how socialism works. It's not different. Don't talk about, don't come to me and say, there's different types of socialism. Get the hell out of here with that. Your justifications do not work. Do not work in my country. Your justifications do not work. There's no different types of socialism. All of them is the, from the same Marx ideology. Don't come with, it's different. We're going to fix it. It's different. No, 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 no. It does not work. All of it is the same. I want to read a comment right here uh, real quick. And it says right there, and it says right here, Edwin Melendez says, uh, do you know the democratic socialism strongly opposes authoritarian governments? Yes, I know. That's what the riots are happening. That's why they want to dismantle the police. That's why they want to dismantle the authority. That's why democratic socialists are against law and order. That's why democratic socialists are against, not they're not in favor of the constitution. That's why democratic socialists, they're not for peace. They're for creating chaos. That's why democratic socialists, have you seen what happened in Venezuela? People rioting, people getting, people rioting and, and protesting every day for food. That's what democratic socialism is against the, the authority, the, it's an, against the authority and against the power of capitalist people that they're ruining and they have us like slaves and we don't have an accent, everything for all. No, 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 no. It does not work that way. You want to be take care, you want to be taken care of by the state? You want to be a parasite that only goes home and goes to school and that's it? And when you graduate, they're going to tell you how much you're going to make, where you can go, where you can work, that you have the same uh, base salary as a normal uh, person that did not, you know, make an effort to graduate from college. Have you seen that? I'm not referring to you. I'm referring to everybody. That is that is socialism. That happens in Cuba. You don't know what is going on in Cuba. You don't know what is going on in Venezuela. You don't know what is going on in Nicaragua. You don't know what is going up in Argentina. You don't know what is happening in our country of Mexico, turning into a socialist country. You don't know. You live in the United States. You live in the land of the free, the home of the brave. You live in a capitalist country. You live. You live in a great country that is free. You don't live in a socialist country. 
You don't live. You have never experienced socialism. You're over there in the United States. You're not over here. So you cannot tell me by typing and by reading a book, what is socialism and what is communism? You cannot tell me that when we are experiencing a changing in our country of Mexico and turning point to socialism. And I'm seeing the Latin American, the Latin people, the, 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 the people in, in Venezuela, I'm seeing the people in Venezuela suffering from an exodus of 5 million people because of socialism. You gotta be kidding me with your definitions of dictionary in Google. Please, before typing, before writing, before giving me your Marx ideology that I already read the book five million times before you were born, before giving me all of that, you had to live where the people are dying of hunger, where the economy has changed, where the economy has shifted for only the rich and only the poor. There's no in the middle where the state is going to control your life and control everything that you do, how much you make, how much you win, where you can go and where you cannot go. You are not going to tell me how socialism works when we have seen it and we are seeing it in our country. We are seeing it in our country. How people have, I have interviewed people from Venezuela that have over, that they are over here asking for the asylum to go to the United States. All these people that they are lawyers, doctors, engineers, professors, that they live in Venezuela and they're exiting from Venezuela because of poverty. And they're exiting of Venezuela, not because they don't have money. It's because there's no electricity, because there's no water, because there's no food, because the classes, when you go to the university, you know, sometimes the electricity is on, sometimes the electricity is out. All these people exiting from socialism. You know what, people? I'm going to bring a teacher that is my friend. He's a history teacher. And he's had a doctor's in history also. And I will bring him to the live feed so he can explain to all these young kids what socialism is. Really. I will bring him so they can explain to all these young kids, all these young kids that they just picked up a book and they think that they know everything about socialism when they don't know squat. They just read a book and they're guided by this blind, you know, uh, uh, F the government, against the government, F this, F that, the, dismantle the police, defund the police. And they don't know what socialism is about. And they don't know how socialism right now is working with globalism. They don't know nothing about that. You need to pick a reality book and understand what is happening. Get that knowledge in your head and get the reality of what they're doing to us. Yes, there's some fairness around the world. Yes, you know, uh, probably, you know, capitalism has not done uh, a fantastic and great job in some countries. But look at your country that you live in, brother. Look at the country that you live in. Do you know how many people want to go to the United States? Have you seen that multiple millions of people in caravans trying to go to the capitalist country of the United States? Do you know that? Do you know how many people wish that they had the opportunity to be legally working in the United States? Do you know that? Do you know that? Do you know? <laughs> Let's read a book. Let's start reading, educating ourselves. You know, read about what is socialism really and how it affects a country. You have to read the definition between socialism, communist, communism, and when you read them and understand them, experience it yourself and start seeing how the economy has fall in places where socialism, in places where socialism have been affected.
I'm not referring to just a specific person. I'm referring to all these young kids. All these young kids, man. All of these young kids. That they are activists. They are. I remember when I was young. When I was 17, 18, 19 years old. I've always been against my government of Mexico. My government of Mexico has been corrupt since, since I remember, since I was born. I have always fought for the rights of the indigenous and the poor people in my country. I always been against the corrupt government of my country. Not consider myself an anarchist since I was young, but an activist against the bad government of my country. This is a government that is a bad government in my country of Mexico. Bad government. I consider myself a Zapatista, follower of me, Emiliano Zapata, a revolutionary who fought against the government and he won for the fairness to the indigenous people to fight for their land because the government and the rich people were taking away their land and their and their and their farming. He fought for the right. This la tierra es de quien la trabaja. The land is for the one that it works for it. That is my heart. My heart always says me that. That is the most important thing that these young kids need to understand. God bless everybody that is watching. Hope that you guys have a great morning. I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News at America's Voice. Follow my partner, Conservative Anthony, at his page on Facebook. And also follow uh, Conservative Anthony at YouTube. Subscribe to his channel at YouTube. And also, you can subscribe to my channel as Oscar Blue and also follow my page on Facebook as Oscar Blue. God bless everybody. Stay safe and follow my page uh, as Oscar Blue. Share it. Share this video and see how many how many shares it got. It gets. <laughs> God bless you all. Stay safe. Have a beautiful day. And always remember, peace and love, everybody, because always your country's first.